When the Japanese dropped their first bomb, I was very young, just 14 or 15. We all panicked and we were very confused. All of a sudden our lives were turned upside down. Time, it said, is a great healer, but that's certainly not the case for 82-year-old Liu Zhenghu and his contemporaries. They'll neither forgive nor forget and are further enraged by Japan's interpretation of events. They can't rewrite the history books. What happened here happened. If they insist on twisting the truth, as they've tried to do for a number of years, the Chinese people will not be happy. We will ensure that the whole world knows what went on here. Having only heard about and not experienced such events, today's 20-somethings much prefer to look forward rather than back. They recognize that progress has been made in recent years and that further Sino-Japanese cooperation can only improve their lot. We should not live with hatred. The people of our two countries need to have frank discussions. As part of the world community, we need peace. We should look at the many advances that have been made in relations between China and Japan. The Peace Accord of 78, the resumption of diplomatic relations in 72, and the increased political, cultural and trade exchanges that have benefited all of us here in China. Japan's reward for finishing top of Group D was to remain in Chongqing for their quarter-final encounter with Jordan. The atmosphere in the city stadium for their three group games had been hostile, to say the least, but surely that was preferable to transferring to another venue for the knockout stages, given the huge distances some teams were travelling between matches. I think Japan would suffer anywhere in China as a result of issues that have nothing to do with football. We've been given a frosty reception by the locals, not because we played an attractive football, but because of political issues. Sadly, when football and politics mix, football always comes off second best. The reception afforded to Jordan on their arrival at Chongqing Airport could not have been warmer. In their first Asian Cup, they made the last eight by virtue of finishing runners-up to South Korea in Group B. But expecting them to accept the defending champions was surely asking too much. A handful of Jordanian fans had made the long trip from Amman and they'd be given plenty of vocal support by over 50,000 Chinese, many of whom were hoping for only one outcome. I'm here to support Jordan, of course. We don't like the Japanese and we'll cheer on any team playing against them. And confidence was high. Jordan's King Abdullah was in attendance and he saw his team take the lead, but they were ahead for just three minutes, Takayuki Suzuki equalising for Japan. The Chinese fans were making their presence felt, and they, if not the players, were treated to the drama of a penalty shootout. Japan missed their first two spot kicks and promptly complained about the state of the pitch. The Malaysian referee agreed to change ends. That was good news for the Japanese, but not for Jordan. They squandered a 2-0 lead, and when Bashar failed to score, Japan were able to celebrate a place in the last four. There, they'd be joined by Bahrain, China and Iran, although the Jordanians had run them close. Iran's Ali Karimi scored a hat-trick in his side's 4-3 quarter-final victory over South Korea. It was the third consecutive time the two nations had met at that stage, and the victory was sweet revenge for Iran, who lost out to a Korean golden goal four years ago. The triumph came despite having three first-choice defenders suspended and their plane being delayed for 12 hours en route to Jinan. 
It was all a team effort. I just took advantage of the chances that my teammates created for me. And it's the first time I've scored a hat-trick for the national team. I really believe the win over South Korea was almost as important as winning the Asian Cup itself because it brought so much joy to our nation. It was to be Iran's eighth semi-final in ten Asian Cup appearances and they were favourites to overcome China, a team they hadn't lost to for more than a decade. But times have changed. The Chinese team has gone through some major changes since the last time I played against them and they've introduced a lot of young players. They have a new and very experienced coach so we can't rely on our previous results against them. Regardless of all the history we should only worry about ourselves and if we stick to our game plan we will overcome China and reach the final for the first time in 28 years. The 100 Iranian fans were clearly outnumbered in Beijing's Workers' Stadium and the home side also dominated the opening exchanges. Chinese pressure eventually paid off as Munich 1860's Xiao Jiayi opened the scoring. Iran were forced onto the front foot and seven minutes from half-time midfielder Mohamed Alavi levelled the scores. Despite being reduced to 10 men for most of the second half and extra time, they hung on for a draw and penalties. But Yahya Gol Mohammadi squandered Iran's fifth and decisive penalty. For China, it was to be their second appearance in the final. For Iran, victory in the third place match was scant consolation. In the other semi-final, Japan twice had to come from behind to see off the much-improved Bahrain. The tiny Persian Gulf state was only 90 seconds away from the final when Japan equalised to take the match into extra time. There, Keiji Tamada scored the winner in a thrilling 4-3 victory. Bahrain coach Srechko Juricic. Although everybody was surprised that Bahrain reached the semi-finals, we were confident that we were good enough to compete against the best teams here. Bahrain's improvement isn't just confined to the Asian Cup. It's been a gradual one, and we've been performing consistently well over the past year or so. We finished runners-up in this year's Gulf Cup, and we're currently leading our World Cup qualifying group. So we've been growing as a team for some time now. Indeed, Bahrain jumped 42 places in FIFA's world rankings last year, earning them the title Mover of the Year in 2003. Currently ranked 45th in the world, this was their first finals appearance since 1988. Their success in China was all the more remarkable given the gruelling travel schedule forced upon them. No team clocked up more mileage during the tournament than Bahrain. 5,000 kilometres to be precise, although their appetite for the tournament seemed unaffected. We were the only team who had to make five or six major journeys from one city to the next during the tournament. This really took its toll and had a major impact on our fitness and skill level. The closer we got to the end of the competition, particularly in the semi-final match against Japan, Shanghai is about the only major city in China we haven't been to on this trip. Apart from that, we saw almost all of China. Home advantage has been a major factor in China's progress to the final of the Asian Cup for the first time in 20 years. They lost out to Saudi Arabia on that occasion, and two fourth-place finishes in 1988 and 2000 was the best they'd done in the intervening years. It's clear that the Chinese team has improved greatly. For that reason, we feel very confident. Having said that, anything can happen, but I think we have a 50-50 chance of winning. We obviously have home advantage and everything that goes with that. But we'll have to play to the best of our abilities and remain confident about the outcome. Once again, the Japanese would have more than just their opponents to contend with. All of China was expecting a home win and would no doubt be doing all in its power to make that happen.
Whilst playing in this tournament here in China, we've had to accept that the local population have been supporting our opponents. That's fine, we've got used to the hostile conditions. It'll be no different for the final. And I've no doubt that we'll stick together as a team and turn in a great performance. We're very confident about lifting the trophy again. In response to a protest from the Japanese government, the Chinese authorities asked the public to respect their team's opponents. As many as 6,000 police officers were deployed both in and around the workers' stadium in an attempt to head off any sign of trouble. And for 90 minutes at least, it seemed to work. And that despite the fact that Japan took the lead. Midway through the first half, Takashi Fukunishi scored his second goal of the tournament. But they weren't ahead for long, just five minutes to be precise. Dalian defender Li Ming delighting the capacity crowd. Despite having travelled to China without several of their biggest names, Japan outthought their hosts for much of the second half. Koji Nakata put them 2-1 ahead despite claims of handball. Then, deep into injury time, Keiji Tamada rounded off a 3-1 victory and sent many a Chinese fan scurrying for the exits. As for the Japanese, they stayed to celebrate their country's third Asian Cup triumph in what was only their fifth appearance in the tournament. Iran and Saudi Arabia can match that haul, although neither have ever had to contend with the problems that Zico's team encountered here in China. The emotion is huge because of the circumstances surrounding this victory. From the outset, the odds were stacked against Japan, but we showed here in the final that we can perform. I must congratulate my team on a great triumph. 32 games, 96 goals and a record TV audience for China with 250 million people tuning into the final. The 13th Asian Cup provided many memorable moments. On the downside, the stadia weren't as full as organizers would have liked, but some tickets cost up to $100. For those who could afford to see games, the standard of football was better than ever, according to UEFA Technical Study Group member Dr. Joseph Venglos, an observer at the tournament. This edition of the Asian Cup confirmed that the standard of football in the continent has dramatically improved. The evidence was clear to see here in China with high quality matches, games played at a high pace and some excellent technique from many teams and certain players. The world's favourite sport is growing in the world's most populous nation and the Asian Cup has certainly aided that process. Next week, another new season, another Galactico. We're in Spain to preview the start of La Liga. And we're in France to profile Lyon's Brazilian midfielder, Janinho Pernambucano. We'll see you then. Football Mundial. 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 Football Mundial.